G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Now, I know it's been a while, but I've started to get back into making videos. A lot of things have happened with Woodworking Masterclass, a lot of changes, a lot of new experiences. Matter of fact, I've just got back from being out in the bush. I've got myself a nice load of timber that I've got to process and turn into chopping boards or turning blanks or whatever it is. Now it means I've got to unpack. Now what I do when I'm out bush, I don't know if you've ever used a chainsaw or not, but it's not much fun chain, changing over a hot chain when it starts to go blunt. So what I do, I just save them all up, and then when I get back home, I just sharpen them up. Normally I could do these at the campsite, but it was a quick overnighter, so I thought I'd just bring them back here and do them. But I'd like to share with you two of the greatest things I found recently for sharpening saw blades off the bar. So come down to the truck and I'll show you. The first one is a filing setup that still have come up with and I reckon it's an absolute corker. It's got three files, two round files, one there, one there for actually doing the teeth and the flat file which is double sided for doing the rakers. So what that means is when you're sharpening the teeth, you're also bringing down the rakers to the correct height. So you're getting maximum cut with your blade. I've got three sizes here, that's a 3.8. Uh, that one's a 0.325, and that one's a 38P, which is for smaller stuff. For those of you who don't know, I've actually got woodworking masterclass on the road now, and I've got a truck all set out, and I do mobile sharpening as well. So a lot of things to discuss later down the track. I'll take you for a tour through the truck. We'll sharpen some stuff, but right now we'll sharpen uh, a chainsaw and I'm gonna be using one of these stills. I'll be using the 3.8 because that's the size chains that I use on my saws. But I'd like to show you another great thing for chainsaw blades and I reckon it's a ripper. I, I'm pretty sure it's an Australian invention. I heard about it, the guys are down in Melbourne. It's chainsawspares.com.au. Check them out there, chainsawspares.com.au. And it just blew my mind because I don't like using uh, abrasive sharpeners. I like sharpening all my stuff by hand. It keeps the temper in the teeth, which means the blade's gonna last longer. But this is a vice for holding the chain off the bar. And there it is. What a little ripper. I think it comes in at about $40 plus postage and handling. So wherever you live, that'll vary. Uh, it comes in flat pack. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10. 11 parts if you include the nuts and bolts separately. So that's what it looks like. Now I'll give you a close up. Just like a regular chainsaw bar in, in part, but it's got these two cam locks. So what I do, I've got one of my chains that need to be sharpened. Slide it in there, and as I said, it's a lot easier and nicer to sharpen it rather than trying to sharpen one on a hot bar. So that's in, sitting in there nicely. Pop that in the vise. Clamp the vise up, and you go through, mark one of the teeth. Generally I'll go on the smallest one to start from. That's looking, this is a reasonably new blade, so there's no obvious ones. I'll start with that one there. So the chain is running anti-clockwise. What I then do is get the emblem here of the saw. The saw would be on this side. You line it up so the round part actually goes into the tooth and the flat part will work on the raker. If you want, you can clamp it. That'll stop it from moving. Same as when you put the brake on your chain. And I'll give it three little sharpens. Move to the next one. It's 
three nice even strokes. This honestly saves so much time and is so convenient. There's nothing to sharpen in the chainsaw at all. And I don't like, as I said, using abrasive wheels because it changes the temper of the chain and you'll find it won't last as long when you're cutting, especially with what I cut, which is good old Australian hardwoods or desert timbers. Okay, now I'm back to where I started. Now, simply a question of loosening that off, picking it up, changing the chain around. Popping it back in. And away we go. Again, I'll mark one of the teeth so I know where I started and where I finished. The chain is now going clockwise, so I'll have the saw on this side. Tooth goes in there, bar is parallel to this here, and three. And the next one. So I just took the texture mark off of that, so I'll just put it back on. So when it comes back around, I'll, I'll know it's there. For me, this is so much easier than messing around with the single round file and then coming back with a flat file to do the rakers. And really, how long does it take? I think there's 38 teeth here all together. And I haven't been timing myself, but that's it. Nice sharp chain. I'll show you a close up. You can see the silver spot on the rakers where they've just been taken down to accommodate the new teeth. So that's it. Check it out, chainsaw spares. I think it's called a, um, I don't know what it's called, an, an off saw chain sharpening vice or chainsaw vice. Absolutely brilliant. So there you go, don't be frightened about sharpening chainsaws. Get hold of one of these, check them out as I said chainsawspares.com.au right about there and um, yeah they're around $40 plus transport or postage absolutely great little time saver and a good thing to have in your kick if you like me and you like going out and swinging a chainsaw around anyway this is Steve can't pull the shed door down because the shed's not here at the moment but saying see you later and remember to keep it sharp use one of these if it's a chainsaw keep it safe Look after yourselves, be kind to each other, and I'll catch you on another video very, very soon. Bye for now.